these things I bring you come from a lot of experience with a lot of kids. And you read all the theoretical things and all of these things, but what actually makes a difference is the activities that you do. Life is an investment. You invest time and energy in things that are worthwhile and you'll have a good life. And we depend on our parents and even our culture to give us a structure to develop our brains. I mean, most people who are very successful, I mean, the number of people in my life, my life who have gone out of their way with no motive except doing good, helping me to learn and develop my abilities is just incredible. I mean, there are many, many people that I owe what I know and what I do to. And it's very humbling when you sit down and really think about that. Okay. But when I was a little kid, I came from a family of nine kids. And when my brothers and sisters, I was number seven, and when my brothers and sisters went to school, they said, oh boy, because they were the kind of kids that you put a book in their hand and they read. Okay. And I went to school and I had a lot of trouble. And I was actually raised in Sarasota, Florida. And they uh, um, gave us South Side School. They gave us IQ tests in the fourth and fifth grade and set us according to the scores we got. And um, I sat second to last. That he had this system. That's a dumb kid. And it was embarrassing. But I had a lot of trouble in reading and things. And I was uh, out on the beach one day. And I was always, I mean, those days they didn't clean the beaches up much. And an old tree would come in and the sand would cover it and the stobs would stick up. And um, I'd always tripping over those things, stubbing my toes. And um, I'm the only guy that I know who has had a wart on his shin, warts on his shin, okay? But I was out on the beach and I had knocked all the warts off my shin. Well, it had been an old fisherman who had been out on his boat, got tangled up in the machinery to pull in the nets and had uh, laid on the deck and bled to death and had told this gory story. And so when the blood was flowing down my leg, I thought I was going to die. And when I didn't die, I decided I was going to capture control of my feet. And so he had these little fiddler crabs, which you guys know about. And so as I walked on the beach, I would hit my toes on those. And then I got to where I could run and pick a crab hole way down in the distance, run, and my, my toe hit that thing exactly. But I have worked and I worked and I worked. But at the end of the fifth grade, I got to walk from the last seat up to the first. And from having a real problem in reading, I got to where I read very, very rapidly. I mean, it was just overnight almost. And so it was a, a real interesting thing, which was very interesting because the sheer terror of sitting in a class and not making it I pretty well blanked out that part of my life. So when I actually worked with kids. I didn't go back to that knowledge except subconsciously to develop the things that I developed. But there is nothing in the world more horrible than sitting in a classroom knowing that you aren't stupid and people believing that you are, okay? I mean, how many of you can just see the, the real, that's terror, right? Yeah. And that's pretty well what drives me in the things that I do. I mean, you can make a real difference. Now, I uh, joined the Air Force. I spent 10 years as a flight engineer. I did a lot of work in test flight. Um, I got out, went back to school. Uh, 
had a started teaching. My superintendent, well, I'd had a teacher in junior high school who had worked for Thomas Edison, and he had given us a lot of Edison's thinking. And Edison was a very practical, sensible guy, okay? And what he did is, is like Edison said, if you have a problem and you do something and it doesn't work, do something else. And you don't just pull something out of the air. What you do is the things you do understand basic operating principles because if you understand the basic operating principles of something, you can troubleshoot it. You can make sense of it. And this is what I'm going to try to make this thing for you is a, an idea on basic operating principles. But anyway, I had this, but uh, the superintendent came and said, well, we have all these really bright kids who aren't learning to read. They're smarter than many of the people who go to graduate and go on to graduate schools and go into the professions, but they never ever get to do what they really possibly could do. He said, you do stuff different. He said, let's see if we can crack this nut. So I went off and took the courses to teach these kids, came back, and what they told me in class, when I was in the Air Force, they taught you about basic operating principles of aircraft engines. You came out and you had a problem. What you learned here made a difference here. Why? Because those airplanes had to fly and they'd crash if you didn't understand what was happening. Same thing with kids. If you don't understand what's happening, they'll crash. But the stuff they taught me, uh, you know, one of the things that just uh, never forget this really dynamic psychological a psychology professor saying that men who nurtured nurturing children and a male who nurtures children that's a feminine characteristic well I nurture children and I don't think that's a feminine we I mean, think a man that doesn't nurture children is just nothing okay I mean that is both man and woman that's our most important thing I mean the next generation should be better than the last gen our generation. I mean, that's our our job, developing our, our, our system. But there I was. So, so here I came to this class and d d taught them what Edison had told me. And so six weeks into the class, this one little guy looks at me. And you talk about a terrifying experience. He said, Mr. Belgal, what you're doing is not working. Because I taught him what Mr. Royer, my teacher, had taught me that about Edison. He said, I'm not learning to read in here. And boy, I was not happy at all. I mean, it was just like being up there naked. I mean, it was frightening, okay? How am I going to answer this one? Another one says, I'm going to, this is a fourth, fifth, and sixth grade age group. I'm going to junior high school next year, Mr. Belgat. If I can't read any better than I'm reading now, I'm going to really be in trouble. And the next one said, my mother said, you're certified to teach us how to read. And that was my life observer because I was certified I mean what do you monkeys have question what I'm doing I mean they've gone to university and then came to my senses and I said okay